Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host Ashutosh Garg and today I'm delighted to welcome a very very senior professional from Hungary, Mr. Alessandro Farina. Alessandro, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. you. Alessandro is the founder of the ITL Group, which is a one-stop shop consulting company. Uh, he was awarded the Officer of uh, Officer of the Order of Merit by the President of Italy. He's also an author of a book titled Hungary 2014. So Alessandro, with such an amazing career so far, let's start a conversation about the ITL Group. Tell me about the work you do. Sure. I, if you allow me just to start from one step. Uh, sure, sure. Please go ahead. And uh, how ITL Group started. Okay? Yeah. Uh, I live in Hungary since 92. I'm mm-hmm. Italian. Mm-hmm. And uh, like many times uh, it happens in life, uh, uh, things happen by chance. Mm-hmm. So I was coming for a, a stage in a, an English consulting group uh, mm-hmm. and uh, was supposed to be here only for one year. Mm-hmm. And as you can see, I'm still here after 30 years. <laughs> yes. So when I worked in the English consulting company, I was doing uh, basically what I learned and what I'm still doing today. Mm-hmm. So I realized that it was we were at the beginning uh, of the opening of uh, Central and Eastern European markets. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a flow of uh, foreign investors coming to Hungary. This uh, created the need for several services. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, of course, uh, I realized that language was a big issue uh, mm-hmm. in uh, this geographical area for mm-hmm. the newcomers. And they needed the kind of uh, trusted uh, service point of contact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So after this uh, experience for a few years with the, uh, the English consulting company, mm-hmm. I tried my own luck, as we say, and I uh, established ITL Group in 1995. Mm-hmm. When I started, I had, uh, let's say, I was rather young. Okay, mm-hmm. I was, I had no capital and uh, just uh, a big energy and willingness to do. Okay. So everything I could do at that time was uh, not to be the professional, but to be a trader of mm-hmm. services. Mm-hmm. So I was the typical, let's say, here I am. Trust me, I will do everything you need. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, I was purchasing the services that they needed, so accounting services, legal services, whatever was needed for the client, mm. Mm. and then selling back these services, I repackaged them, mm. of course, in a very transparent way for the client because he mm. knew that I had no structure behind me. Okay, And I started just with one uh, uh, Hungarian employee who was, mm-hmm. of course, helping uh, language-wise communication. Right. Then things... Of course, it was everything was rather complicated at the beginning, but then the second year got a little bit better, third year a little bit better, and we started to grow. And the more I was growing, the more I started to bring in-house all those services that I was purchasing from mm. uh, external suppliers before. Mm. Till, uh, let's say, the recent days uh, where we have nine uh, different business divisions from wow. accounting, tax, uh, legal, uh, audit, uh, real estate, marketing, mm. HR, payroll. And uh, we are, let's say, serving all possible aspects of the business that we can uh, mm. afford to do mm. so, okay? And uh, we reached uh, about uh, 75 uh, colleagues now in the company. And according to the last, uh, let's say, uh, rankings on the Hungarian market, uh, mm-hmm. we have been ranked as the 10th uh, largest accounting company and the 8th wow. largest uh, uh, payroll company. Mm-hmm. So it was, let's say, of course, a big satisfaction to start from uh, a, a zero, okay, and see after a long time and a lot of energy, the growing of this company with, uh, let's say, decent success on the market. So we are... Every time we are as a one-stop shop, as you said, uh, we have clients who buy just one service uh, or some others who buy the full package uh, and yes. we follow their own life and grow from the local market. Yeah. So, so tell me, uh, you know, when you started from nothing and have built up in the top 10 in Hungary, what have been some of your learnings and some of your challenges? <laughs> Challenges I had a lot okay. <laughs> and learnings too, because, uh, uh, you know, when uh, uh, you learn by doing, uh, 
I, in a way, I have to thank uh, my clients uh, for giving me the opportunity to grow because mm. uh, their trust has been, uh, let's say, my gym where I could experience uh, uh, everything that I, that I right. did so far. And uh, there you realize that uh, every, I, I realized two things, that uh, every, what you think is a simple business uh, mm. is a very sophisticated business. Correct. So even if you take, I don't know, this a glass of water, you say, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, selling a glass. But then you see that there are 125 different techniques to make a glass of water. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, that, I mean, you need to be professional, basically, Correct. in everything you do. And uh, so my very first concern was uh, to hire next to me people with knowledge. Mm-hmm. Because that has been the only way to build, uh, let's say, a stable uh, business uh, mm. in, uh, in this country. Mm. Second point is that uh, when you come from a complete, completely different culture and, uh, let's say, country language, uh, mm. of course, the very first uh, point is to uh, match this uh, cultural, mm-hmm. uh, let's say, difference to understand the local culture, to understand how people are thinking, how they are behaving, because uh, small differences uh, make a huge difference okay. that, um, on daily, on day to day. So what, uh, what very often uh, uh, we won, uh, a, let's say, a lot of business, uh, not mm-hmm. because we were professionally best, mm-hmm. uh, but because we were able to understand the need of the client better right. than others. Right. So this has been, let's say, one of the key winning points for us, mm-hmm. uh, listening, basically, and understanding what was the real problem for the mm-hmm. client. Mm-hmm. So they, let's say that uh, this is one issue. The other one that uh, where I had a lot of uh, challenges uh, has been the growth. Uh, mm-hmm. Because uh, when you have two employees, uh, you have one situation. When you have 10, uh, you have another one. Mm-hmm. But when you start to have 20, 30, 40, 50, then uh, you are a company. So I, I realized that uh, the other big challenge has been that uh, when the company was uh, with the two employees, uh, it was, let's say, one situation, let's say, rather easy to manage. I knew everything that was on each table. Until 10 people, the same. I could still manage everything by my own. Right. But then you start to have, let's say, the growth. And the growth means uh, HR problems, uh, means uh, cash flow, finance, uh, means a lot of new tools uh, and uh, and uh, business areas that I was not prepared for. Mm-hmm. And that was, let's say, uh, the very first. So I, I had this kind of uh, stop and go in, my, in the growth of the company mm-hmm. because whenever I reached uh, a new wall in the growth, uh, a new, let's say, a point that needed different mm-hmm. attention and different knowledge, that was the moment when I had, uh, let's say, to reinvent a little bit the wheel uh, or to bring a new colleague in the company to help me to, let's say, get over that difficulty. Mm. And that happened several times, I have to say. Uh, But luckily, so far, each year, we always uh, uh, grow. uh, I only had one year. I still remember it very well, 2010, when uh, I had, uh, let's say, physical difficulty for myself. Okay, I had, uh, let's say, a, a few months where I had to stay out of the business. Mm-hmm. And that has been a very, very difficult year for me because uh, within the company, my absence, uh, let's say, has been noticed, of course. Yes. And, uh, okay, I mean, it has been a very, very challenging year for me. Mm-hmm. But then since then, we, we rewind in the right direction. Wonderful. So, you know, running such an amazing business, uh, but in a country where you came, where you did not even know the language, how yes. did you evolve a leadership style with, uh, you know, as an Italian uh, working in Hungary? I, that's a, a very, uh, let's say, interesting question because uh, uh, I come from a family uh, that uh, since uh, several generations, uh, by my father's side and even by my mother's side, they are all entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. So I cannot recollect of any of my relatives who has been an employee somewhere. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's a very, let's say, peculiar situation, the one where I come from. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there is something in the blood that at the end uh, uh, makes you survive and swim in, uh, 
deep water anyway uh, without let's say taking up any challenge uh, that, that's coming up mm-hmm. my style is definitely uh, let's say a soft uh, democratic uh, consensus style what i what uh, i use uh, what i build uh, i trust very much my people mm-hmm. of course sometimes uh, this trust has been missing so by people that's no question but i'm not changing let's say that from this point of view mm. so what is fundamental for me and has worked well so far mm-hmm. is that uh, during uh, my uh, development of the company of the business uh, i uh, identified those uh, close pillars who have then uh, let's say appreciated very much uh, this uh, let's say way of uh, conducting the business uh, and have defended me from uh, let's say the daily day to day let's say activities and uh, and challenges so we were able to build a very strong team a very good team mm. that uh, is uh, let's say working together with me in a full trust so they appreciate very much uh, what my knowledge is uh, and very often i also exhibited my weaknesses mm-hmm. because i say it doesn't make any sense that i try to show what i'm not good at mm. so i prefer to delegate uh, those tasks uh, where uh, let's say other people are much better than me okay and use all my strengths and uh, let's say knowledge uh, in those fields uh, that mm-hmm. is mostly on uh, expansion external relations strategies uh, so building the business but then having somebody behind me that is uh, managing uh, the day to day let's say activity of the company very interesting so i'm not going to move to another part of our conversation alessandro which is you know when i was reading about you you have two very interesting projects one is the atlas world project and the other is the fear is the mind killer project yes tell yes. me about atlas world first and then we'll talk about the, the other one sure what uh, due probably to let's say the education from my, my background more than mm-hmm. my education, okay mm-hmm. the family wise we have always been a teacher uh, Uh, let's say very strongly that uh, the core values uh, are uh, very relevant uh, mm. in what you do mm. and they will always be with you so okay. what i mean is that uh, ethics uh, for example is one of the key points uh, in our let's say education okay. what i realized when i arrived and you can imagine that uh, let's say these are very uh, fresh developing countries mm-hmm. Uh, the core of values sometimes is uh, completely uh, changed uh, and sometimes ethics is not on the top of the priorities but uh, let's say it's business 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 uh, uh, money 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 okay mm-hmm. so at the beginning is very hard to make people understand why you do or you think in a certain way or why when you give your word to something you don't change it uh, even if that means that you lose money or uh, basically is not convenient mm. okay people are usually is very opportunistic in what they do mm. so we always had a kind of a very deep uh, soul from this point of view on uh, the social impact and aspect of what we do mm. uh that is one of the reason for example why we got this uh, uh recognition high recognition from the president of the italian republic uh, mm. and so on uh, because we always had a very open eye for the community for the business community that uh, we okay. work with Mm. So there was there has been a moment when uh, we decided to uh, separate uh, in a clean and clear way uh, the business side of what we do that is everything related to, to ITL group and the so called non business side the social part the social impact part of what we do and we created uh, this uh, uh, atlas world and in atlas world we have put all those uh, projects initiatives uh, that uh, were the so called non business side of what we mm-hmm. did but uh, that uh, we love to carry on every year mm-hmm. atlas world is what uh, is a, a is a new uh, let's say rather new project in a way because uh, uh, before it was bits and pieces that we have just put under the one umbrella mm-hmm. where the aim is to create uh, a community of uh, other people uh, that are mind uh, minded in the right way as we wish uh, so who are mm-hmm. thinking uh, uh, like uh, what uh, we mm-hmm. 
imagine, because we realize that very often there are good people around, but they need, a, let's say, an umbrella where to recognize themselves. And so we help them to build this umbrella where they can join and give their energy, their efforts, their, uh, let's say, win wisdom mm -hmm. uh, on benefit of others. Right. What we realized was that uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, prices and recognitions in, uh, mm -hmm. in Hungary, like uh, all over the place, okay? But most of them uh, were for the biggest investor, the uh, top uh, uh, expat CEO, mm -hmm. that of course goes uh, most of the time to the biggest uh, uh, blue chip companies that are on the market. Right. But uh, those uh, smaller, uh, invisible so-called uh, good uh, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who are doing fantastic things uh, are not, uh, uh, let's say, appraised by anybody. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to bring those uh, under the lights uh, of the public to say, hey, guys, I mean, there is a lot of good people around. Don't just look always on the dark side of what mm -hmm. happens around. Mm -hmm. Let's take out the good, positive uh, vibe and energy, let's say, that we have, uh, and let's make best use of it. Right. So we created the, uh, the first uh, Atlas Award that mm -hmm. was a uh, very nice uh, uh, prize uh, done by an Italian sculpture, so with a very valuable prize, I would say, also. Mm -hmm. uh, that has been very much appreciated on the market. Uh, and uh, just to tell you, the prize was given to one of our competitors okay. who was doing a fantastic job in, uh, mm -hmm. in Hungary. So we were not afraid of... Uh, let's say, giving light to somebody who is in our field of business, just to make an example. But the comments uh, that we got from the market about that this lady were so great and fantastic uh, that it was, okay, this is our winner for this year. Fantastic. Thank so that, that's, uh, that's what we are aiming. So we will, uh, from now on, uh, we are going to organize uh, events, uh, uh, award, uh, once a year the award, uh, also this year, mm. the second part of the year, we are going to, to reorganize it. Uh, and... Uh, and try always to give uh, what I think uh, small entrepreneurs need, that is positive energy. Mm. If you start to speak about uh, only crisis, uh, war, and uh, all these things, this is just killers for the mind of, uh, let's say, people. You need to give hope, you need to give light. Uh, of course, all the rest happens and exists. Yep. But uh, they, you are anyway bombarded every day by all these bad news. Uh, mm. But you, sometimes you also need to open your eyes to something new. To something fresh. Mm. Well said. Well said. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about was your storytelling platform. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the mind killer is uh, uh, the evolution of, uh, in a way, okay, of what uh, we initiated uh, in uh, 2008 uh, during the first crisis, mm -hmm. uh, economic crisis. We realized that just to get one step back and then I go to the fear is the mind killer. Mm -hmm. The, the, everybody was selling uh, as a networking uh, the crisis. So each conference, business lunch organized by whatever chamber of commerce, ministry, whatever, was about the crisis. Mm. And once again, as I mentioned before, mm. I was so tired of getting uh, the crisis as, uh, on my plate uh, that I said, we need to give uh, a smile to people. Mm -hmm. And we organized uh, a big networking event that was called the Budapest Business Party mm -hmm. that was a huge success. And since 2012, uh, every year we organize this, uh, let's say, huge event in Budapest. We have over 1,500 people mm -hmm. coming and so on. Uh, later on, COVID started. And COVID was once again uh, one of those lessons uh, and I was uh, feeling the same. So the first few weeks of lockdown, uh, I was really in deep crisis with myself uh, because I, I was thinking, oh my God, now my business would collapse uh, and it's not my fault. Uh, right. It's just uh, the world is collapsing uh, and it's out of our control. So I started in a way to panic, okay, psychologically. And I had a few days without, uh, with very bad sleeping and so on. And then, okay, you stay back with your energy, you put together yourself and you say, come on guys, I mean, we will survive it also. This one, let's go on, let's work, let's build, yeah. let's help and so on and so on. During COVID, we had one of the highest growth in our business uh, uh, that we could imagine Fantastic. because uh, we were very strong on the market, very present, uh, and everybody needed some kind of support. So we realized that uh, sometimes it's mindset, uh, sometimes not, of course, but sometimes it's just mindset. So we said, okay, let's give our contribution also this time. 
let's create a, a platform for storytelling that will maybe inspire somebody, maybe not, but let's try to give our small, let's say, drop in the ocean, also right. in this instance, and let's collect positive stories from those who, in a way, survived, let's say, business-wise, of course, because we are always uh, on the business side, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's give a positive message to the world, to our business community. And so we went out, we found a cooperation with a couple of business journals and so on. And, and it was, let's say, a, a pleasant uh, uh, experiment and, uh, and platform that uh, collected a few, let's say, nice stories from people. Fascinating. Fascinating. Well, wish you a lot of success, both with Atlas World and with uh, Fear is the Mind Killer. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, uh, Alessandro, I have time for one more question and I've got to talk to you about your book and, yes. uh, and the country that you've made home. Tell me about Hungary 2014 and uh, what makes in Hungary an attractive destination? The, when we did the book, uh, once again, uh, you know, it was nothing new if uh, you want to see it from, uh, from a from a perspective, but it was completely new from a different one. I'll tell you the difference. Mm -hmm. Basically, most of the largest uh, uh, consulting companies, uh, the big four and all of these guys, uh, they do fantastic publications uh, on uh, how to do business in a country. Okay, mm -hmm. You want to go to wherever you go on the internet, you find uh, dozens of these publications. The biggest mistake of these publications uh, is that they are very, very technical. Mm -hmm. They are not uh, addressed uh, to the right reader, according mm -hmm. to my personal opinion. Okay, so that's my absolute personal yeah. opinion. Mm -hmm. Because in my opinion, these books uh, should be addressed uh, to the entrepreneur, to the decision maker, who is uh, deciding to enter the country and not to the tax accountant of the company or whoever else, because that's not relevant for that moment. The decision-making process is different, okay? Mm -hmm. So what we did, we rewrote the book from a complete different angle. We created a book that you can read with a pleasant glass of beer in your hands or whatever in a two hours, but gives you a full picture about the country in an easy and fully understandable way without overselling the country, but giving, the, let's say, a very clean cut about the main features of the, of the country. This book has been so successful that the Hungarian government asked us to release the rights for the book. And since then, they use our graphics design and that, let's say, uh, same concept to promote Hungary around the world. Amazing. So we have been, let's say, the biggest satisfaction for us has been that uh, uh, before nobody understood exactly what we wanted to achieve, once it was done, uh, they understood it so well that since then uh, it's in their hands uh, for Taking the it over. Yeah. yeah. So, of course, it was not a book that we could do every year because uh, we spent also a lot of uh, time, energy and money to do it. Yeah. But it's one of those products that uh, I'm sure it will stay in the library of uh, all those who got it uh, and uh, it will stay there. To be honest, we are going to make a new one uh, uh, that is already in a draft version now. It's more or less ready but from a different angle, but that will be subject of the next discussion. Absolutely, absolutely. Alessandro, on that note, uh, thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for talking to me about your absolutely incredible journey, uh, you know, coming to Hungary with an English firm and then making Hungary your home. Thank you for talking to me about all your challenges and learnings as you built ITL into one of the top 10 groups of Hungary in the area of consulting. Thank you also for talking to me about what seem to be two very passion projects for you, the Atlas World Community and uh, Fear is the Mind Killer. So thank you again for speaking to me and good luck to you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.